Tim Perry. Tim Perry is with us today, and uh, Tim is with North American Properties, um, and he is a magic man. Um, and <laughs> Tim, uh, as, as you think about, Very too nice, Tim. Yeah, uh, as you think about some of the stuff that you've been involved with, um, you know, when you when you think about fixing high potential but challenged mixed use developments. Uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, I often teach people and say that I have a little tiny magic wand, that I, little bitty magic wand, and I can help them with certain things, but you gotta have a big, big wand to do some of the things that you've done. And, you know, you think about, uh, you think about some of the properties that you've worked on, Atlantic Station, um, Avalon, my goodness, uh, Burkdale Village, Colony Square, Newport, uh, Ridge, Ridge Hill, and now the Forum in Peachtree Corners. I mean, obviously, you know, ob obviously you've got the wand and, and it's important, you know, to transform, to transform these properties to something that's struggling, to something that, that this, this thriving, uh, and you know, I, and from an economic development standpoint, and, you know, I'm on the Public Service Commission. I regulate energy along with my colleagues here in Georgia. Energy's important uh, for economic development, but being able to take something that's in a great location but has struggled and turn it into something magical, wow, uh, it, it really is a great thing. And we're looking forward to hearing about what you're doing with Peachtree Corner. So, if you got questions for Tim, you can put it in that chat, and I'll uh, I'll uh, bring it up uh, towards the end. Uh, but Tim, uh, turn it over to you and Jody. If you'll let him share his slides, that'll be great. Thanks, Tim. Um, thanks everyone for taking some time today and uh, and your lunch break. I assume everyone who's not on video is eating a, eating a salad or something in the background, uh, but. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to just kind of talk about North American properties and our philosophy as and how we kind of apply that and what we did then specifically and drill down into uh, Peachtree Corners because it really is um, fits the mold of what we do and you know North American properties since I joined in 2009 at that time there were there were four of us I think and we moved forward at the end of 2010 we bought Atlantic Station really started to understand. Um, the importance of the experience and it, we didn't know what we didn't know but we knew that there was a in that case a uh, you know a safety perception and we had to fix the safety perception and started that by uh, putting security through hospitality training and really focusing on their interaction and the realization that you know a guest on property is much more likely to be a security officer than they are me for instance so that's the first phase, and we have to be really um, intentional about how that interface works. So once we made it safe, then we had to get people to come back and try it. And we threw a million dollars in marketing and had bands all year and got people to come back. And, and it, was, it was to drive traffic back and so the restaurants could do better. We got rid of that non-performance and brought in new, but we, we stumbled into, hey, you know, this really works, right? People come back and they shop and they spend money. And and they hang out and they enjoy themselves and creates a really active environment that no longer has a public safety uh, perception, negative perception, but has a very you know, interactive and socially magnetic uh, perception that drives sales. And when we bought Atlantic Station, we had, you know, we had three or four tenants that were on the verge of terminating their lease and went to them and said, hey, you know, and this is like Victoria's Secret and Bed Bath and Beyond. Those have been it's said, give us two years. Just just stay for two years. We'll cut your rent to three or four or five percent of sales. Just stay for two years and give us a shot. And they did. And within that two year window, all of a sudden that percentage rent was larger than their base rent. And they went, okay, never mind. We'll go back to what we were paying. And they extended and they stayed and they told their friends and and we kicked out about five restaurants that was that were doing maybe ten million in sales and replaced it with seven restaurants that were doing $25 million in sales. And it just sort of, you know, bred at this 
what do we do to drive sales? And we, we bought that physical property. We had to figure out where to put things around it. We didn't really lay a brick. We built a valet stand and stuff like that, but didn't really redevelop it much. But we did take those lessons and apply them to, um, to Avalon and took the new industry jargon that had been, been created with um, customers who are now guests and tenants who are now partners. Um, we cared about the ground level experience and getting that right and went and developed Avalon and it then took that and moved into Colony Square. Even though Avalon may be primarily um, retail or it has a lot of it, 700,000 square feet of it. And then the other uses feel a bit more uh, ancillary, the, the office or the residential above it. At Colony Square, it's clearly, it's a million feet of office. It sits over 200,000 square feet of retail. So it's the diff it's completely um, flipped, but the basis, the theory and, and the activation is really the same. If you get the ground floor right and you change that conversation, and for those who've been to Colony Square, um, five years ago, you walked up and you said, hey, here's Tamarin Seed, for those who remember that. It's amazing. It's located in the bottom of an office building. And now you go and you're like, I'm going to Rumi's. Oh, look, there's an office building above it. It's a completely different conversation with the architecture and the feel and the layout. And that's kind of um, operations touch and you know, change the, in redeveloping the property that we seek everywhere. So we had Colony Square, we still have Colony Square. In July of last year, we bought um, Avenue East Cobb. We bought a deal called Newport and the Levee in Cincinnati. We have um, the uh, Ridge Hill, which is a 1.3 million square foot retail center in Yonkers, New York. Mercado Shops, which is down in Naples, and then um, Forum on Peachtree Parkway, which we've just gone through working with the city and working with the city to, to do kind of what we did, get the ground lower right and focus, focus on community. And um, as, as cities such as, and I was on the phone this morning with Alpharetta, these are no longer greenfield cities. You know, there's really not a blank slate. These are all redevelopment cities. And so the redevelopment isn't just a product type. The redevelopment is, is a use. And we've all seen, you know, 2020 land use plans and all of that, but someone's got to put the, put the building on the ground. Someone's got to acquire it and do something there that works. And, um, and so it's also that redevelopment isn't a chance just to get rid of an old building that's no longer functional and replace it with a new one. It's the ability to take an entire area and recreate that into a successful downtown, which is the ultimate amenity for you know, suburban markets. And with Peachtree Corners, we, um, we love great municipalities. This one, uh, Peachtree Corners is fabulous. We love great you know, business partners in that sense. I gotta figure out how to get back to share my screen here. We love great business partners um, in that sense and working with them toward a common goal. And, and a much different relationship than kind of the historic, hey, we want to come in and bulldoze something and build something and we're the, we're the big bad developer. Really do try to start with the grassroots and work with the cities, work with the communities, work with the neighbors behind it and do something that everyone's going to enjoy. Because at the end of the day, no one comes. It's not going to be successful. And, uh, and when they get here, we want everyone to have a good time. So I was going to share with you um, sort of those thoughts and specifically how we applied it to Peachtree Corners. Um, Tim, are you seeing my screen? Yes, I am. Perfect. Right. Perfect. Just confirming. Great. Uh, so like a lot of like a lot of municipalities, this is, you know, Peachtree Corners was a was an office led uh, submarket, it's going to be the technology hub. Um, Paul Duke, you know, was extremely innovative in bringing that to him, and then followed by names we know, Jim Cowart, who brought the residential to a great extent. Spalding Corners was the first residential property, and it became at that time a great urban plan. We've got the office, we've got you know single family residential. We expand, um, but things change over time, and now we have an opportunity. Or ten years ago, had an opportunity to kind of relook at Peachtree Corners. And the city of Petrie Corners was founded in 2012. Kind of see it there. Um, the goal of which was to get control back of their zoning, the use, you know, and their community. Um, then fast forward to 2013, this property here was under contract and going to be developed as suburban garden style walk-up multifamily. 
from the city had the foresight uh, to say, you know what, the forum already existed across the street. Um, that's kind of our community centric. That's the that's the flag in the ground that everyone uses. And we have the opportunity to, to build off of that and create a great town center. We have a town, the, the town green, the parks and that kind of stuff that are put in. And they bought this and then sought to redevelop it into for sale, uh, residential, uh, grocery, and a, a town center, which they did very, very well. I mean, we had the opportunity to come in and look at Peachtree, uh, or sorry, at the Forum. There were a few things. One, the brand was old. At the time this was built, this was the Forum on Peachtree Parkway. Um, and people referenced it that way. Oh, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to go down. Oh, you know, it's just past the Forum, right? It, it was the anchor. And But now at the city and with everything that's gone on here, um, we sought to embrace this, not as Peachtree Parkway, but the Forum Peachtree Corners and have people go, where are you going? I'm going to downtown Peachtree Corners. That could be the Forum, that could be Town Center, but kind of a holistic look at all of this and what makes great downtowns, great downtowns. And then the connectivity of that into the neighborhoods that surround it, oops, into the park and into the residential and how each of these uses builds off each other. So as a resident in a neighborhood, you always want to be able to go to Mambo Italiano, but it's no longer here. And they're like, well, why did it close? Yeah, I used to go there two or three times a month with my friends. And what the, the difference is that in order to do the sales, you need to have residential on site. You need to have office and daytime population on site. And you people are saying, oh, I love that place. I go there two or three times a week. And it's, tr it's purely just a sales game. And we get the comments all the time. You know, Oh, they just bought it. They're going to spend money. They're going to jack the rents. Uh, you, you can't charge more rent if tenants aren't performing any better. We got to back up from it, all of that and say, our goal is to create an amazing public realm where people come and they spend money in the restaurants and they spend time with each other and we drive sales. And at the, at the center of everything we do, it's driving sales. The percentage of a tenant's um, Operating expenses that is rent is like 10%, give or take. So if they do more sales, they can pay more rent, but at a certain point, they can't pay any rent. And we've got to focus on our tenants' health. And we track it. The more goes into this than most realize. I mean, at Avalon, we know because we track their sales, which tenants may not be performing. And if it's a restaurant, then we partner with them. If it's some sort of service, we'll partner with them in an event. If it's a soft goods retailer, we'll actually send our social media team in and do dressing room diaries and use our social media channels to promote their fall lineup that's coming out and help each one of those tenants ourselves create a healthy and successful business. And that's what it takes. It takes a mix of uses and takes a super hands-on approach with your tenants in the community um, for them to be successful. And uh, the, as I said to Peter Corners, there are a lot of, um, skeletons of communities that didn't take action and before it was too late. Gwinnett Place, we all know, you know, if you don't have good housing options, you don't have a great base and a great amenity, then you lose big employers. Um, North Point, or sorry, North Lake Mall, North Point Mall. In each one of these cases, the cities have to come in and essentially bail them out. Got to come in and say, okay, save our city. We'll give you all the residential units you want. We'll give you whatever you want. We'll incentives and everything else. Well, how about playing, playing a little bit more active on the front end so we don't end up with on the left, you know, losing Williams-Sonoma and turning into Goodwill at Peachtree Corners, where we take that Williams-Sonoma and Lululemon, that was a pop-up, and didn't want to sign a long-term lease because they didn't know what the future of the forum looked like. Now they're going to move into the Williams-Sonoma space. They're going to expand to double the size, and they're going to do a flagship store because they are feel aligned, and they feel aligned with the brand that the forum is going to be. Um, other cities, I think that you all appreciate this. You do, all, you do a lot of work in all of these, but these cities that have played offense, Lawrenceville, Sugar Hill, Duluth, Chambly, these have all said, okay, we need to, we've got to redevelop our city. We want to do the, we want to get the density all together in one place so that it feeds off each other. So that, yeah, uh, you know, a freestanding apartment project with a one ground floor retail tenant's going to fail. But if you put enough apartments around with ground floor retail, then they all feed off each other and create synergy. You add office into it so that you have daytime population. When you have people leaving home, you have people coming to work, you have people leaving to go home, you have people that are arriving back at home. 
and they come and they spend uh, their time downstairs in the social environment. And these have all been successful. The, the big partnership piece is that the cities have to be, um, they have to be partners in this. They have to encourage developers to come in and, and invest like this in these community centers. Halcyon, Alpharetta, Sandy Springs, Decatur, you know, just look at these, the red dots on each one of these maps represent where they allowed multifamily. And because that's always the word, you know, no one wants, but you got to have bodies in order to have sales. You got to have sales if you want your, your favorite local restaurant to hang out and stay. Um, and then, yeah, this was Peachtree Corners. They, Peachtree Corners has owned 950 units in 10 years. Uh, they this year have done the star there. That's the new Tucson Court, the Alliance project that's under, and then the two sites up here in their downtown. And it really is, I think, that. Um, Excuse me, the population in 10 years has increased by 2,600 people. The job creation, Peachtree Corners, is more than 6,600 people. And the housing creation um, has, has not even gotten close to matching that. I think that new homes are, are only a couple thousand. So you got to keep people here and you got to give them an amenity and a reason to stay. And then you have to activate it. This is what we do. Retail, office, the for rent. The taste, the, the savor, the Boulevard event there in the bottom right. Just this past week was noon tonight on the upper right there. That's a fashion show we do in uh, in uh, partnership with Burt's Big Adventure, and they send kids who are who have cancer or terminal uh, to Disney World. Their whole family, all expense paid, no whole, nothing left out. In the eight years that we have done that, we raised seventy seven thousand dollars last week for Burt's Big Adventure. And in the eight years we've done that, I think our total is now about $425,000 that we've raised for Birch Big Adventure. So at each one of these, I mean, the property has to be part of the community. And people get dressed up in ball gowns like they're walking the red carpet and the kids strut down. There's not a dry eye in the place at times, but those are the connections that you have to create. It's not about, the, you don't build community inside the buildings, you build it in the space between. And that's what creates the success. Um, bringing patios and that outdoor interaction, that integration here of the multifamily. And then the effect that that brings on the community. On the left, you can kind of see this. Those are all single family developments that have been done since, uh, since Avalon. People move into the hotels, or sorry, the hotels. They move into the apartments. They stay a year. They stay two years. And then where do they move? They move. If they don't move to wherever their grandkids are, they don't move to the beach. They move to where they can roll, still be walkable. Maybe they want to move out of the a rental where you have people above you or below you. You want to get into a townhouse. You want to be on the belt line. You, you don't, you know, different affordability, but it grows. And in Peachtree Corners, there's a tremendous, a tremendous ability. Residential developers will find a way. And that's already been the case um, around the forum where on the left, you have a new condo building that was approved a few weeks ago. And then actually a few months ago. And then on, on the right, those are a single family lot tore down the house, building six townhomes. The city can expect that to continue. And the more that you put density around it, the more it really turns into a downtown. And then building off of that, the city wants to do performing arts center, and wants to continue building out the services that are there. We've always said that the three R's of real estate, for those maybe teachers, you know what the three R's are, um, access, visibility, and parking, read and write and arithmetic. As we said, the three R's, access, visibility, and parking. But the complete mix of uses, the driving of the sales, and the rental by choice optionality are all part of the success then uh, on top of those three R's. And you look at some of the other projects we're doing. In the upper left is the plan for Avenue East Cobb, where we're taking down a retail store and creating a plaza interior. We're putting some restaurants and retail around it with a concierge and, and um, with a uh, uh, platform for events and everything there in the center, but creating a sense of community so that you don't pull up and park and shop and then get in your car and drive across the property and do it again. So you actually walk the property. We'll have six or 800 people show up for an event in a parking lot. And I'm telling you, it's hot. I'm tired of wearing a sports coat at those events. It gets hot. We gotta have a public realm. And that's what it looks like there on the bottom left, the plaza that's interior. And then on the right, we just opened this past week at Burkdale Village up on Lake Norman, north of Charlotte, a redevelopment where we took the Central Boulevard, put in the plaza, put in the screen, put in the stages, 
put in two-story restaurants, that's gonna be a brewery on the bottom right and created additional public space and realm for people to enjoy that's active. Just putting down grass or turf is, is just turf. You've gotta be able to activate it and, uh, and use that space. This was the glow run that was just a few weeks ago at Peachtree Corners. Now imagine, instead of this being in a parking lot, imagine having that plaza at Burkdale Village or the plaza at Avalon in order to host and be the heartbeat of an event of the property like this. Um, comments we got from that were, you know, I wish we had more restaurants that stayed open later. Um, I wish we had more things to do. Oh my gosh, this is great. I want to come back. We've got to focus on the connectivity of the community, the activity, food and beverage, and then the programming. We'll do 200 events a year. And for those who are familiar with the how Avalon works, the concierge and the events and the activities, that same operating program has been budgeted to be installed at Forum. So we're not cutting anything back. It'll be the same sort of suite of services uh, that we have there. This is um, what the new boulevard will look like. On the left, I'm gonna get y'all's picture out of the way so I can see. On the left, uh, these blue boxes become patios. You can see where we've taken parking out of, um, um, taking parking out and created much broader sidewalks, two restaurants programmed down here around the central plaza, um, defining space better between public and vehicular realm. So those raised traffic tables basically just you know, raise things up to the height of the curb. There's a comfort as a pedestrian that you have uh, walking when you don't have to step up or step down, you feel like you're in your, your space. And there's a discomfort that the an automobile has by driving up on that traffic table and not just stamp concrete and it's not smooth. You've got to have some texture. You've got to feel the wheel. Like, okay, this isn't smooth. Like I'm supposed to go slow higher. I'm in, I'm in somebody else's space. And we intentionally create that so that it's safer and so that we, we uh, can expand that public realm. We're going to put a food hall on the uh, plan north, which would be the north uh, west side of the, uh, of the boulevard, and then patios on the south. Then we left parking for convenience, for seniors, for everything. And then in the center, we have a, a big retail run. So those, pro, those smaller boxes in the center are programmed to be um, soft goods. You see, we don't have as many patios. This is the retail run. You've got to, right now, you get about two thirds of the way down the block and you can look down toward the end and go, ah, I'm good. There's nothing really down there that interests me. I can go to DSW later. You turn around. You know, by creating activity at the north end and then having this retail run, um, we create that dwell, not that drive space, but that dwell space. And then we have more parking and then we get to the plaza, which we've located near the future parking deck for ease of access valet, for ease of parking for events. Um, on the south side, plan south, this is the Paseo next to Mojitos. That's what can, will connect over to the pedestrian bridge that connects us to the uh, Peachtree Corners Town Center. And then again, patio space, concierge stage building, a two-story restaurant, and then a parking deck that we'll develop in, uh, in conjunction with the city in the back. So we'll take out about 200 spaces, we'll add about 300. And then again, down in the far west here, the left, uh, we left the parking because people are coming out of home goods, they're probably not gonna push their cart across into a deck. And then the rest of this, we leave the same. So this is activating that public space. Here it is, um, rendered restaurant, concierge building, restaurant bar, soft goods, restaurants at the far end but a lot more public realm and a lot better flow through the property. Here's the plaza. It's the same size. It's actually a little bit bigger than the one at Avalon. May not look at on some of the plans because it's, it's so far out from a perspective standpoint. Um, here's where we've programmed food hall with the pergola, these traffic tables in this pedestrian space, and a couple of restaurants on the, on the north end of the property. And here's kind of everything uh, pulled together in the town center. Uh, for this doc, for this to work, we also asked the city, and they um, um, gave us the entitlements to bring additional uses. The big use in here is multifamily. So as you can kind of see here on this plan, the neighborhoods behind, you know, obviously low density single family residential, uh, state route that is a heavy thoroughfare. This is where the density should be centered. We have multifamily that lines Peachtree Parkway before you get to the office building on the north end. Uh, additional multifamily and a hotel that'll connect to the pedestrian bridge. So this was important. 
as part of that connection coming across the bridge and not looking intimidating like oh my i gotta go all the all the way down those stairs in order to get back i've got to go all the way up those stairs so i don't even want to use it but bringing it but anchoring it on this end into some sort into a secure lobby that gives you some vertical transit and makes you feel like you're going somewhere and then uh, tr uh transgressing through the paseo by mojitos and into this plaza area in the center and then likewise bringing um, a true multifamily deal on this side of 249 units. So this was, there was a hotel zone on the east side, which would be the set plan or uh, perspective south. Here, we moved that hotel to where it should be fully integrated into the forum development and the forum site. Then we bring initial, all these bodies and all these friends and all these businesses um, that come, you know, the 50, 70 employees in the hotel alone, they come and enjoy the town center and our programming be complementary to their programming. So as we said to um, you know, Peachtree Corners, this is what it looks like today. It's still relatively low density. It needs bodies and it needs people to get in cars to come here. And rather than uh, zone an apartment down the road, it still requires people to get in their cars and come here um, or to zone another hotel further down the road that still requires that business guest to get in an Uber or have somebody pick them up or drop them off you know, integrate all of this into downtown and create and fortify the, uh, you know, the amenity base and uh, the, that serves, um, you know, whether it's a, an hourly guest shopping or eating, or it's a daily guest at the hotel, an annual guest of the apartments, or a five or 10 year guest who's a tenant in one of the office buildings or employee, bringing all of that here and then stacking the merchandising so that at 6 a.m., when a resident's walking their dog, there's coffee. And at 9 a.m., when people are coming to their office, there's coffee. And at 10 to 12, there are activities, there's yoga, there's wellness, there are things we do in the morning. A great um, mix of restaurants, whether it's QSR, or town center, or, or a sit down at the forum. Afternoons for shopping and um, happy hours. And then at five o'clock, have a great, great selection for dinner. As people come back home, they're going down to eat, not a lot of people eat in, their, eat in their houses. These are renters by choice, not families, and really support the retail so that as the lower density single family community comes together, they are able to you know, count, on, count on this being there. Uh, from a perspective standpoint, here are some of these. I figured uh, not bringing in additional retail on the ground floor, um, shortening up Barnes and Noble, would love to keep Barnes and Noble there. They're just not doing formats of that size any longer. We're doing a 15,000 square foot store with them now uh, in another project. Love to keep them there, both sides of the road. Um, rooftop decks, amenities, you know, super high end amenity, uh, amenitized property. And here it is from, you know, as you're coming up or down Peachtree Parkway, a lot of landscaping that the city had us keep, but a lot of that landscaping they had us maintain and enhance along 141. And then the accessibility, you could still come in here and enter into the, enter into the building into the parking deck or go the other way. And then across the uh, street and the Peachtree Corners Town Center side, something that's a little bit more earth tone, a little bit more blended. Frankly, something that looks a little bit more condo and a little bit less apartment, which blends in nice with the uh, mature landscaping, the trees and the botanical garden as the city calls it between the town center uh, in this property, as well as the parks and wellness trails and everything um, on the east. Uh, connectivity, again, very important. All these trails, bridges that come across and connect the multifamily into the town center. Um, this is under contract and it performs, but not all of the tenants perform as well as some, you know, others. You've already had rollover. And so the, what you would think are premier locations on the town green, um, the cinema, you know, certainly needs more more people going in to watch the movie, especially coming out of COVID. So this connectivity and this bringing of bodies, you're not going to drive from Peachtree Corners Town Center uh, to the Forum. You're going to walk. And you're going to walk coming the other way. You're certainly going to walk. You're not going to drive from here. And I think the best thing, the be one of the biggest bullets the city missed was not having a hotel here, because as a ho I stay in hotels all the time. Frankly, I would be out of like ah, I still have to get in an Uber just to go next door. But as a resident, you know, it's all it's all very well connected. So um, this is essentially there, there were, you know, different camps of concern. But at the end, Peachtree Corners saw this, saw how we want to invest in communities, saw the things we were doing already on the property, whether it's um, activations, 
landscaping, lighting, music, getting the gum off the sidewalks, embracing the Glow Run and, and uh, the Peachtree Corners Festival and how we could bring all this kind of stuff together. And we really look forward to being a partner with the city and a partner with the neighborhoods. Since the zoning, I've been meeting with uh, uh, HOA representatives from, the, from Amber Field behind us and some others and talking to them about it and, and really starting to develop that relationship. Like, hey, you know, I know you're concerned about um, the light pollution coming through with a car going through here. But we don't even know how it's going to work yet, right? Where's the deck? How is that? You know, where's the entrance, egress, ingress, uh, ingress, egress out of the deck and how it's going to work? But I know this, if you're not going to come because you're mad at us, then we're not going to be successful. So we're all in this together and um, city, the uh, community and North American properties. And in this case, you know, all in, this will be around $450 million of total investment in downtown Peachtree Corners. And it's what we look for, whether it's Huntersville, North Carolina, uh, Peachtree Corners, East Cobb, Alpharetta at Avalon, um, Naples at Mercado, where we can create a mix of uses and a vibrant social um, area is, you know, the best we can do. And uh, as we say, everything matters and, uh, and we are committed to excellence. So we wanna be proud of this. I live, I have, I live in, in Johns Creek, so just over the river. This is where I drive on my way to work in the mornings down to Midtown and really look forward to driving through this and being proud of what collectively we've all um, achieved here uh, versus worried about the forum and what could happen if you didn't continue investing in it. Great, Tim. Um, I, I love Peachtree Corners. Um, Wendy and I lived in Old Town Nor Norcroft back in the day, early in our marriage. And I, obviously, I'm in Athens now because I have to live in a certain district in the state. But we are having our election night party in the forum at Ted's Montana Grill uh, right. because uh, because I really I really like all that Peachtree Corners is doing in terms of attracting technology businesses, autonomous vehicles, electric charging, it it fits with my own brand. And that's why I wanted to be there. A couple of questions um, uh, about, uh, one about, about stages and the effectiveness of having a stage uh, and doing performances. I know I was in Savannah last week and at about nine o'clock on, on the east part of the river, a new development down there, they were having a concert, a little country western concert, just for you know, just for people in the apartment and some of the new townhome owners. How do you feel about stages? You know, how often do you need to have performances? How how good does it need to be to attract people? Yeah, um, we feel pretty strongly about having stages, and so there is one programmed. Um, Brittany Johnson's on the phone. Brittany, do you happen to have a picture you can share from uh, Burkdale Village last week? Uh, yeah, I can. Let the me one with all the one with all the people in the trees. Yeah, hold on one second. Um, we've, I mean, we, you've got to have that, and so, and you have to keep investing. So, you've been to Avalon, you've been in the plaza. You, you know, we set up bands up there by the fountain, and we played at the plaza. Uh, we should have, we should have covered that all along, and we're going back this year and covering it. If you've been there for events where you have um, you know, media uh, screens and stuff, we've, we've erected those this year uh, in 2023, putting in a, I think it's 18 by 22 LED screen that, we're, um, that will be used kind of in front of, not in front of Kona, but in that bed on that side. So you kind of have to go back and continuously improve. And what we just, the building we just developed in, in um, um, uh, Huntersville, North Carolina at Burkdale, will be very similar to the one that we end up here. There, I had a kind of picture of it on the, I had a rendering of it on the screen, but what we're gonna do is much more uh, much more impactful than what I had on the screen and Brittany will share it here in a second. So I think that's really important and important to activate. How about golf carts? Um, you know, a, a, a question or ask about Peachtree City and, you know, you see other neighborhoods kind of going uh, all in on golf carts, I can't, I mean, I don't see those at Atlantic Station. I don't see those at Avalon necessarily. Yeah. Uh, does the forum lend itself to golf carts? Um, it's just funny. I, I drove back into Amber Field here behind. One time there's the, the Fields Club. And I stood there and 
I looked at this big wall for the retaining uh, the uh, retention pond here behind the property. And I thought, how are we going to get a golf cart up there? So, and I actually went through every street and every cul-de-sac. And uh, unfortunately, unless I buy somebody, unless we buy somebody's house and tear it down, no one's going to want that because then you get the two on the other side wouldn't like it. But uh, connectivity, I'd love to be able to connect some to the neighborhoods and stuff, the fields, neighborhoods back here down East Jones Bridge with the with the sidewalk uh, and the trail system the city has put in on the north side of East Jones Bridge. I think that could accommodate a, a golf cart and really just making sure that it's uh, you know, legal with the city and municipality. I mean, we, if people wanted to start bringing their golf carts, we'd put in golf cart parking. Absolutely. And we're going to put in, you know, additional EV stations and Tesla stations and everything as well. We do that everywhere. Uh, Zoe asked about a shuttle, especially during uh, holiday shopping season. She said it would be great. Uh, I second the road uh, uh, diet protected bike lanes would be uh, uh, protected bike lanes would be wonderful. Um, where do you see and I was in uh, Savannah last week for my clean energy road show and Savannah really has uh, has has added a lot of protected bike lanes throughout the city there. Are, I still didn't see that many bikes while I was down there and it was as crowded as I had seen it in a while. Um, so I don't know for sure that if you build protected bike lanes, they will come. What do you think about bikes uh, and Peachtree Corners? Well, you know, it, well, good luck getting anybody who wants to ride a bike down 141. So again, you got to get, you got to get, you know, over uh, either side of 141. But the the trails that the system the uh, city is putting in the agreements, I think those are all great. It should be bike friendly. We'd love to have more, more, uh, you know, more bike access here. And the autonomous, um, you know, we've we've spent a fair amount of time since closing on what kind of technology and security we want to integrate. And so that's everything from you know cameras to the um, fully integrated LED lights that have the cameras. It's all interconnected through Wi-Fi and 5G. Uh, we had a meeting about that just this morning, security, safety, and camera system. Um, same with um, um, same with the autonomous uh, shuttle that's on the other side. You know, I don't believe that this. There's a there's a long road, and the city has done great job so far getting down it. But it's a long road to get an autonomous vehicle to cross a state route, right? Uh, 141. So there's, well, you got to go under it or you got to go over it. You know, maybe they should have built the bridge bigger, uh, but it, we would love that. Uh, the shuttle operator right now would be, would, has already mapped out the route at the forum, but it would be a, just a circle at the forum. It wouldn't connect the forum to anything else. So, you know, getting that connect over, over or under 141 and getting the access would, would be great. And we would love to have that. I mean, um, technology park. Right. And now Curiosity Lab, they're amazing, whether it's T-Mobile um, that can help us or Intuitive. There are some amazing uh, tenants that we want to include and want to want to uh, offer uh, and help with the forum to create a testing ground for all of those uses. So like I said um, the city's chief technology officer, um, the FUSIS security folks and the camera group, we all had a meeting here this morning to go ahead and start talking about how we're going to deploy and what systems we're going to use. So we're big on, we're big on all of that. I was at Microsoft headquarters in Redmond, Washington and meeting with them on sustainability. We were trying to lure them here with you know, a couple data centers and, and things uh, as a state, but their shuttle system to the, to the questioners uh, point, their shuttle system was robust with uh, hundreds of vehicles and they, they had all of these, it, it felt a lot like Peachtree Corners and Technology Park in that they just, they didn't really have high rise buildings. They, these were all, you know, just one or two story, you know, office buildings along a, a kind of a long parkway. And if you needed to go from building 12 to building 100, in every lobby, there was a monitor and you you know, you you click need shuttle. How many people you know are in your party and where you're going? And Microsoft had, you know, either uh, these little minivans or or sedans or golf carts or you know uh, even things a little bit bigger that would that would be running. Uh, so I, I guess it is possible to 
ramp up shuttles to go even beyond the forum, right? Into kind of the whole community. That'd be great. I mean, keep working with the um, city and, and Brandon and Brian and Greg, you know, everybody appreciate corners to, to do that. Question from Brian about how are you going to manage traffic during the construction phase? Uh, good. Well, well, so we'll start on the north end of the property where I talked about having the food hall. And the reason we start there is because we, while we take out some parking, that parking is almost never used, right? The Canucans is vacant down there. There's a fair amount of vacancy on that end. So removing those few spaces and, and developing the food hall from on the, at the, uh, the beginning, which will be, you know, call it um, second quarter of next year, getting that going. Um, at the same time, we start building the parking deck so that we're not impacting parking too much on the north end while we're back building, you know, bus side built. By the time we get to the plaza and the other soft goods, we've started, we've started making a really big impact on the amount of parking available. The parking deck is now open and available and we've already, I call it, passed over the fountain to get to the plaza. So you have access through the middle around the circle and the fountain and the obelisk into the parking deck. So it's really, you know, getting the parking going at the same time we start on the north end so that by the time we've really uh, impacted parking and accessibility through the site, the parking deck is complete. Um, that there'll be road closures and stuff as we have to move things around and relocate utilities and all of that kind of stuff, but we'll do it minimally impactful. And certainly, certainly we do everywhere take, uh, you know, the holidays into consideration with any of those, you know, any of those plans, right? We don't want to impact our tenants' ability to be healthy during the peak season for retail. Valerie uh, says we need this type of development south of Atlanta. And I don't know if you've seen it, Tim, but I was down at Trillith Studios in the town of Trillith recently with Dan Cathy. We did our Clean Energy Roadshow down there this year. Uh, and it feels a lot like what you're talking about here. Uh, some of the same elements that you're trying to do uh, they're trying to do. Do you know of any better development on the south side than Trillith uh, that would compare to what you've uh, what you've done at Avalon and what you what you're doing at the Forum? No, um, you know I think um, I, I don't know of anything else down there. I think there might be an opportunity for you know for somebody um, at um, Ashley Park, which is uh, you know a very similar development, big development down 85. To come in and do something special there with a lot of help from Noonan uh, to do so, and then I, you know, downtown Noonan, um, I don't I don't know them, so I don't want to put any words in anybody's mouth. But I know that they you know have a great vision for for that area and a great idea of what they want it to become. And you know, and, um, God rest his soul, Hal Barry was very you know engaged in doing that, and hopefully somebody picks that up and continues working with them to do so because this the, you know their communities down there whether it's Henry County or Peachtree Corner or to Peachtree City to um, uh, to Noonan that are great communities, right? That work really well. We're just not as, as familiar with them. And and with Avalon and where we live, it's kind of stayed on the, on the north side. But I think Ashley Park presents a, a real opportunity for somebody on the south side to come in and think, you know, big scale um, and do something that's special for the community there off 85. So, um talked about an emphasis for priority on local retail restaurants as opposed to national mm -hmm. brands would be great. Do you have, is there a formula in your mind about the number of quote national type of brands versus more organic or, or, uh, or, or local brands when you're doing something like this? Sure. Um, local restaurants are key and it doesn't have to be one off, right? Uh, it can be, uh, yeah, Marlowe's is one of my favorite restaurants. They've got probably 20 locations now. They're already across the street at Peachtree Corners Town Center. Uh, but you know, the people that understand the community and kind of kind of what they want. And then a diverse. I mean, you got to make sure you have wine and margaritas. <laughs> so everything else, everything else you can build around. You got to have wine and margaritas. Um, so you need a great Italian place that's uh, you know, mojitos is is local. We love that. You need a great Italian place. Ted's may be a chain, but to those in Atlanta, it feels local to us, right? Being uh, George McCarrow and Ted Turner and you know, Longhorn and Ted. So uh, I, think, I think they're right. When it comes to restaurants, that's key. Uh, local retail has always been a challenge. We've, we have tried for a long time to figure out local retail because it takes so much money 
to create the space and then you know the community and this has been true whether it's avalon or it's uh atlantic station we want to we want this this is my favorite local boutique put them in and you do and they go and they shop once or twice and then they sort of stop going back and it's not it's not good for us it's not good for the tenant right it's so what we do and what we've kind of figured out is we do what we call small retail and these may be 200 to 400 square foot spaces that we're able to do, you know, one year um, leases, more or less license agreements. Um, it's not a huge space. So the, re the local folks don't have a, don't have to go out and buy, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of merchandise to stock it. Um, it often works as an extension of an existing unit. They may have a store that's already there and they just want to come and take 200 square feet. It's pretty much plug and play. You put a sign out front, you paint it, you express their brand because we're big about people expressing their own personal brand. And it limits the amount of capital that, that you know, a local um, owner has to put in and it limits the amount of exposure that we have to put in. And it limits the amount of term that they have to guarantee as part of that lease in order to recapture those big expenses. So anyway, that's, that's the solution we've come up with and it works. I mean, it, we've, you know, we do markets, we do something seasonal. We, we've had many, many tenants come out of the seasonal markets that we've done in vacancy and take permanent spaces. Uh, but this kind of small format retail really is the, is the right thing to do. You're not burdening someone with a, with a 10 year lease and a personal guarantee. You're giving them a year, you're doing a percentage rent deal. If it works and they want to expand, that's great. And if it, and if it doesn't, they want to retrench, that's fine too. But it's really healthy for everybody. Tim, I, I occasionally go to Atlantic Station, not that often. Part of the reason is, is that the parking to me is so confusing. I get down underneath there. I don't know where I'm at. Seems like there's so many spaces unavailable and I just get, I, I just get confused there uh, where at Avalon, uh, it, 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 everything seems so simple. And maybe it's because that parking is above ground and I can see the, you know, and uh, for the most part, and I can see, you know, where I'm at. It, was there some lessons learned off of Atlantic Station as you've moved forward in, in other, other properties that you uh, feel like were significant things that you learned from Atlantic Station? Wayfinding is big. I mean, that was a, you know, that was a 15 acre deck times three stories tall. So it was just a massive, massive operation and shared shared uses. As you got down into the deck, you didn't just work, weren't just confused about where you were, but there were chain link fences everywhere because the you know residential units had nested parking and then the second level of controlled access into them. So there was a lot to that. Colony Square, um, your parking's big. The park assist programs with the green lights and the parking counters really helps people uh, get through it and lighting, you know, really good lighting. Uh, so that I mean at Avalon it's all above ground it'll be above ground you know here those are also both paid decks and in the suburbs other than a convenience being valet or what I call parking management you know there might be premium spaces that you pay for uh, apartments uh, valet but general parking or, or parallel park. we're not planning on doing this here but if you go to Avalon the parallel parking has parking meters and that is intended to make people not stay there all day. It's not a uh, it's it's not a big revenue generation that we're trying to squeak out of the out of the property. It's really to, to force turnover so that the um, you know teenager who works at Airy doesn't pull up and park there in her car and leave it there all day while she's at work instead of having that available for people to use. Uh, we're leaving more parking at Forum, so we expect that to turn over more, and we're not planning on doing any sort of metered or other parking cost other than the valet. So it's, it's all about parking management and it's, it's an art more than a science. Uh, you know, we get, we've got a lot of parking studies done over the years, um, confirming uses and space, but managing parking is, it truly is much more of an art than a science. You know, uh, it, it really sounds like you've studied a lot about psychology, uh, that I, I did not realize there was so much psychology involved with all of this, like you were talking about the person walking down the center and they look and go, oh, there's nothing down there. And that, that means we've got to do something to get them down there. I mean, 
and th this will be the last question here before we do our giveaway of our Cheesecake Factory uh, $50 gift cards uh, to our random draw. Um, Tim, I mean, what was, what was that first place when the light bulb went on for you that this type of development that you're doing now was what was needed in order to revitalize these properties? When, when did that light bulb come on for you? Oh, I think it was when we, um, it was when we had the band Perry play in December of 2011 at Atlantic Station. And, um, and that was kind of that, the culmination because as we, as we looked and I remember, you know, Mark and I going so many tours and saying, why is, why is there music coming out of the call boxes? And the manager at the time was like, oh, well, you know, you can't put speakers in the tree beds because we're on a parking deck. And so therefore we reverse the emergency call boxes and play music out of the call boxes. And the benefit of that is because it's really loud, people don't congregate next to the stairs. So it's also good for fire. I'm like, that is such crap. You are making it up, you know. And within months of, uh, of buying Atlantic Station, we had speakers in the in the um, in the tree beds, and we had the call boxes actually functioning for emergency call boxes. Uh, we had security, you know, all the things. But at the end, by one year in, we had the band Perry playing. I remember standing there looking around, going, "There are five thousand people crammed into Atlantic Station who last year at this time hadn't been in years to Atlantic Station," and whether it was the music, it was the stage we'd redone, it was the, they, they felt safe, they, they knew where they were coming up because we had repainted all sorts of stuff in the parking deck. It really was where that all came together. And, and you know, it's put everybody in the same uniform, protect the brand, make it safe, all the sort of driving factors that led us to that point or some form of mutation to address um, each specific community but it's, it's the driving, it's the brand values that got us there. And then we take those, we take brand values and apply it to, you know, um, uh, to the next deal, the next deal, the next deal. And I think that's where we should start. So I think the band Perry. And wow. my last name is Perry, so I'm a little, so, yeah. Incredible. Wow, Tim, thank you so much. Thank you to United Consulting for putting this call together today. Uh, our winners today uh, of the, $50 Cheesecake Factory, which Jody will send you an email with your code. Uh, ben Klopper, uh, Elias Mag Maggies, if I, uh, excuse me for butchering that, and Jim Chamberlain. Ben, Elias, and Jim, uh, congratulations on uh, the gift card today. Tim, thanks so much for what you're doing. Good luck, uh, and I'll have to invite you to my party at Ted's Montana Grill at the Forum. <laughs> Please do. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thanks so Thank much you. for being on the call today. Have a great rest of the day.